Before we look at the print function, let's discuss two terms. The first is syntax, which is the rule for forming legal statements. Just as human languages have rules for constructing correct sentences, computer languages also have rules for constructing legal statements in the language. These rules are known as the syntax of a language. The other term is semantics. The semantics of a statement is the meaning of the statement, or what it does. This video will show you how Python's print function can be used to output expressions. We know that print is a function because Python uses parentheses after the name of the function to execute the function. We often use a simple meta-language to describe the syntax. The syntax description for the print function is shown here in the comments. Remember that syntax means the rules for constructing a legal statement. The Python print function allows you to pass it as many expressions as you want, with each expression separated by a comma. The greater than and less than signs are used in the syntax diagrams to enclose a description of what should be replaced in that location in the Python statement. In this case, expr is what we're using to indicate an expression should be placed there. The semantics of the print function is each expression is evaluated and the result of it is output. The print function automatically puts a space in the output between each separate expression. The commas separating the expression are not included in the output. After outputting all the expressions, the print statement moves down to the next line so that the next print function's output will be on the next line. Note that print without any expressions just moves down to the next line. Now we'll use the debugger to step through this. I'll set a breakpoint on the first line of Python code and we'll use the option to debug it. And we'll see down here in the console area, this section over here is where we'll see the output. So now when I step over this line here, using the option of the debugger, we see that sure enough, 7 was output here because the expression 3 plus 4 evaluates to 7, and so it output that, and then it moved down the next line. This print here, without any expressions, will just move down the next line, so I'll step over it. And we won't be able to see down here in the console, but right now the next thing will show up about right here. So now when we step over this line here, it's going to output these three expressions. There's the expression 4, the expression test, which is a string, and the expression 2 plus 3, which will evaluate to 5. And we can see those output there where we expected them to. And then here we have a print with just one expression that's a string, so we'll step over it, and that will be output. And here we have another print function with two expressions, so each of them will be output with a space separating them. And we can see that since that's the end of our program, they were output. And again, going back, looking at this, here, compare that to the output, and notice that where each separate expression is, a space was output, and after each print function, it went down to the next line. Here's another example with a mixture of variable names and constant expressions. We'll debug it. And we'll see after stepping over the first line, the variable name x is now 3. We'll do the same thing. And now the variable name y is 4. And now we're ready to execute this print function that has four expressions, a constant string, the variable x, another constant string, and the variable y. We'll step over it. And we'll see here's our output down here. And we see the x equals, with the space between the x and the equals, was output exactly down here. And then because this is now a separate expression, the value of x appeared here. Notice this space here does not affect the output, but we will usually include it for readability in our code. And then after that, we have another expression, so we'll automatically get a space here, and there's one space right there from there, and then there's a space inside these quotes, so that's why we now have a second space here before the y, and then we have y equals, followed by another space, and the value 4. By default, each print statement moves the current output position down to the next line after it completes. If you do not want it to move down to the next line, you can use the syntax of putting end equals and the string you want it to place after the last expression. Instead of moving down to the next line, it will place that string after the last expression, and the next print function's output will begin right after that string. It is common to use a string that is one space so that it matches what happens if the next print statement's expressions have been in this print function's expressions. We'll demo this by executing the first few lines of this example here. We'll debug it. 
and we'll step over these first three lines. And you can follow down with the output below there. Note that we didn't see the output of the second print function immediately, as Python buffers the output and only sends it to the screen when moving down to the next line. Drawing on the screen is a relatively expensive operation for the computer, and writing little bits at a time would be inefficient. We can force the screen to be updated immediately using the sys.standardout.flush statement. Normally you would not do this, but when stepping through the program line by line, this allows us to see the output immediately. So as we execute this one here, stepping over it, and as soon as we do that sys.standardout, now we see the 3 plus 4 equals here, and then now we're ready to output the second print function here, and we'll see the 7 appear. You might be wondering why we wouldn't just put all the expressions in the same print statement. As the first example shows, it certainly makes sense to use one print statement to output 0, 1, and 2 instead of doing it the way the second example does. Note the second example also needs an extra print statement with no expressions, otherwise the word done would be one space after the 2. We could also fix this by not using the end equals when printing the 2. We can execute these statements to see they both output the same thing. So we'll debug it. You can see the first one here, this output 0, 1, 2, and done. And then we'll do the next set of statements. We'll continue to the next breakpoint. And we'll see this one also output 0, 1, 2, and done. Using end equals is useful when you have a print statement in a for loop. You may recall the for loop example from chapter 1, and we will learn more about for loops soon. But for now, just understand that the for loops shown here will execute three times, with the variable name i taking on the values 0, 1, and 2 as it executes each time. Since we want the numbers to be on the same line, we need to use the end equals with a space to accomplish this. So we'll go ahead and continue by setting a breakpoint here, getting rid of this breakpoint, and continuing to that spot. And we'll see down here that that output 0, 1, 2, and done all on the same line. And the reason it did that is that we had this end equals here, so this done stayed on the same line. We'll now make this last example so it matches the first example. We use the end equals with a space here, so that the 0, 1, 2 all end up on the same line. Then we'll move down the next line before printing the done. So when we continue here, we'll see that this output here matches the original output. Now we can modify the yards to miles example from the earlier video so that it doesn't just output the numeric answer, but instead outputs the corresponding amounts with their units by adding multiple expressions to the print statement. If the user enters 3,520, we want it to output that 3,520 yards is 2 miles. The first expression needs to be the value the user entered, which is stored in the variable named yards, so we'll put that here first. Next we want it to output the phrase yards is, so we need a constant string for that. Then we want the corresponding number of miles, which we've calculated and stored in the variable named miles. And finally, we want the word miles. So now we can run this. And see the output there below is what we want.